Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in our super ultra best mega ultra 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 secret test location in the southwest of England. So as you can imagine for somebody who gets through quite a bit of picks, uh, I've had a fair few drift through my transom and normally uh, they are just un slightly unusual variants on shapes like the 351 and 346. However, it's not unheard of for me to get some right odd stuff. So today I thought I would just get five examples of those for you and they are as follows. The Plex Hyperbole. The Bog Street Leap. The Superbite Iced Ruby Round. The Zoofoy Go. And the Desatomic Grand Finale. So all of these picks are, let's say, different uh, than normal and I'm going to introduce each one of them to you in turn. So Plex stuff is made by a gentleman called Pedro Scassa uh, who makes quite a lot of different things and this one, the Hyperbole, is made from Delrin. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this and I'll try and show it in the picture up here but this has um, bevels on the front for right, specifically for right hand use uh, to slant it in and out which gives it a nice smooth sound and also the front part, front part, is recessed. So it's sort of carved out. Now I don't see that all that often with picks. It tends to be more of a jazz thing. Uh, companies like Dugan are big on doing that. But this is, a, this is a lot of fun. And actually the holes, while you would think it would feel a bit strange initially, once you've been playing for a couple of minutes, feels pretty normal. So let me show you how it sounds. So this is the Bog Street Leap. Uh, now I have done a review of this that wasn't terribly glowing, but it is very unusual and I thought I would share it with you because to somebody somewhere, and this is a very important part of what we do here at Heavy Repping, to somebody somewhere, this is everything they've ever wanted. It has this bit in the middle, this raised bit, which you'll be able to see in the picture. And each of these ends is a slightly different shape and a slightly different thickness. This is more of a catalytical item I believe because although I don't think that this works all that well what comes after it when people decide to take this sort of design and, and try and develop it into something else that will be interesting so let us hear how it sounds <laughs> So the time has come to do this. This is the Superbite uh, Iced Ruby and I'm only laughing because this is one of the most magnificent over the top things I have ever received. John O'Brien who makes these in the States at Superbite, um, he understands picks man, like properly. His, his The blog on his site, which there'll be a link to down in the description, the blog on his site is genuinely interesting and he talks about chirp factor and all this sort of stuff and the, why it is that big picks are better for you uh, in terms of fatigue and all that but this is made from acrylic uh, it is very big I think it clocks in about eight millimeters or something and um, even though it looks really ungainly and cumbersome it's actually a blast to play so let's hear how it sounds
So, this is the Zufoy Go, Willkommen aus Deutschland. And uh, this is made by a gentleman called Malta Sadler. It's made from black Altem, although he does do one from a material called graphite, which is like a half graphite, half glass composition, which sounds wicked, but is a little bit brittle. This one, which is black Altem, is superb. Now, initially when I got this, as I wrote in my review, uh, which you can see in the description below, initially I found this a bit weird to play with because it's... An, I don't know if you can see this. I'll just put this up in the picture up here, but um, although this shape is... It's kind of like a squash raisin or something, but it, it's not It's not symmetrical. So the, the two... It's not like using it this way up and using it this way up is the same. It's different, which is very weird. Uh, but, having played with this for a couple of days, I found that I was neglecting quite a lot of my other stuff. And the reason for that is because this is a blast. It may be weird, but it's really good, and these are not expensive. So it made it into my top five uh, picks of this year so far. And uh, I'm about to demonstrate why. <laughs> So now it's time for the big lad. This is the Days Atomic Grand Finale, and uh, which I have given I have given it this name because this is, in terms of surface area, the largest pick not only that I've ever received but that I've ever seen. Just to put this in perspective, uh, I'm gonna let's grab something sensible. So this is a rock hard plasma. Cool. This is a rock hard plasma, uh, which is approximately the shape and size of a 351, which is your Dunlop conventional size. And that is how big the grand finale is. Now, I haven't used a Jazz 3 for comparison because that would be ridiculous. It'd be like a hippopotamus staring at a duck. But uh, if I put that over the top, you can see that there's a lot of pick either side of that. Uh, however, shh, however, this is still quite an experience to play with, and you'd think, hmm, bass straight away, but no, on the guitar, that's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a bit strange to get used to at first because it's so massive, but it's not really any more different from using a pick, another pick that's around about the sort of 5mm mark, so let us find out what happens. Obviously, there is no right and wrong when it comes to making picks, really. I've had uh, stuff come through the door that's been super thick, and don't worry, there's a video coming up all about the big boys. Um, but I've also had stuff come through that's super thin, uh, everything from the T1 series, which is 0.3 of a millimetre, up to the utterly ridiculous thing that I got from Superbite, which I'm saving for another video, which is 13 millimetres, and looks like a chunk of meteorite. Uh, there's there's no right and wrong way of doing this. If you put loads of holes in, it's fine. If you have that mad F1 pick thing that sort of folds over, that's fine too. Uh, and the reason why I'm sharing these with you is not to go, ooh, 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 look how weird they are. The whole reason is to say, there's all sorts of stuff you wouldn't have thought of. There's lots of stuff I didn't think about before I started doing this. I would never have used picks made of stone before I started doing heavy repping, but they're now one of my favorite materials to use. And it's worth noting that 
everything that you saw on the list here today didn't make it in because it was like funny or anything. All I'm trying to show you is that there's there's all sorts of different ways of going about this and that one of these things, whether it's oblique bevels, whether it's the fact that it's full of holes, whether it's the material or the size or the dimensions or whatever, might be the thing that you have been looking for without even realizing that you needed it. And it will change the way you interact with your guitar forever. Uh, that was certainly the case for me with a couple of things uh, that I've tested in recent times. So I hope you've enjoyed this little stroll down uh, Odd Street and that something that you've seen here today has sparked your imagination. Do like and share and subscribe because it allows Heavy Repping to become the, become the channel that I know that it can be for you guys and I just want to give you the best I can. I'd also like to give a little shout out today to Tendrils, uh, whose new record is coming out soon, for sending me this shirt. Cheers, guys. Grind on. And uh, I shall see you next Thursday. Same rep time, same rep channel. And just remember, if you're not sure what to do, rep hard, rep heavy.